my young friends, none of us likes to suffer. I know we're all suffering in big and little ways in this time. The loss of freedom, activities, people we know who are sick or maybe have died, or we just want life to go back to normal again. What do we do with all of this? This is where our faith comes in. As we will celebrate next week, which is Holy Week, Christ entered into the pit, which is our messy world, our messy lives, in his suffering and death and conquered it in his resurrection. Our mess and struggles are not greater than Christ. The saints show us that we can enter our sufferings with Christ and find peace there knowing of his presence. Does this sound crazy? Let me share an example of a young blessed, a person on the journey to becoming a saint who experienced this. Chiara Luce Badano was born October 29, 1971 to Ruggiero and Maria Teresa Badano in a small community in the north of Italy. As a child, she had many toys, and one day her mother asked her to give some of them to the poor. At first, she was possessive out of fear and saying, they are mine. Then after a little while, she had divided her toys between the new and the old ones. And guess what? She actually wanted to give the new ones away. Like St. Therese, she enjoyed doing small acts of love. One evening, she wrote, one of my classmates has chicken pox, and everyone is afraid to go visit her. With my parents' permission, I decided to do my homework over at her place so she wouldn't feel lonely. I think that love is more important than fear. She had a special heart for the elderly, wanting to be with and assist them. At the same time, she sometimes wanted her own way, like us, got into fights with her parents, like us, but she was ready to reconcile with them soon. She was a very ordinary teen. She enjoyed sports such as tennis and swimming, hiking, listened to pop music, went to coffee shops, and danced with her friends. She was popular, liked by boys, had a sense of adventure, and wanted to be a flight attendant. It seemed like that she had everything going for her in her life. One day at age 16, she felt a really bad pain in her shoulder while playing tennis, which she thought was maybe from being tired or tendonitis. As the pain continued, she went through medical testing and she was diagnosed with an unlikely form of bone cancer. She knew that she was suffering with Jesus and offered up her sufferings to him and would often repeat, if this is what you want, Jesus, so do I. To offer up our sufferings, as Father Andy once described, is to connect the, our sufferings to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And somehow, God the Father brings some good in the church and in the world through them. All we have to do is say, for example, Lord, I offer up my difficulties from my remote learning for my grandma who's sick. Lord, I offer up not being able to see my friends as much as I would like for those who are suffering with COVID. This actually has personal relevance to me today as yesterday I was blessed to get the first dose of the COVID vaccine. And honestly, today I'm kind of feeling kind of rotten, but I'm offering up these sufferings for those who are suffering so much more from COVID itself. As she was getting ready for an operation, she recalled that, quote, her heart was filled with an immense joy and all fear left me. In that moment, I understood that if we're always ready for everything, God sends us many signs of his love, unquote. She underwent chemotherapy over two years, but as her treatments failed, she had to start to prepare herself for death. Even when she was in the hospital, she didn't just focus on herself. True to her name Luce, which means light, she was a light that brought faith and joy to the doctors, as well as her parents, her friends, and other patients. One of her doctors stated, through her smile and through her eyes full of light, she showed us that death doesn't exist, only life exists. Even though she was in pain, she took walks around the hospital floor with a girl who was addicted to drugs and suffering from depression. As she was preparing to die, she told her mom, when you're getting me ready, mom, you have to keep saying to yourself, Chiara Luce is now seeing Jesus. Her last words were goodbye, be happy because I'm happy. A powerful way to go. Do I fully understand how to live for Christ and radiate this joy in the midst of suffering? No, but I want it. God works through our desires. In hearing how Blessed Chiara approached suffering in a different way than complaining as the world expects, would you want that as well? This can only come through God's help. 
We call it his grace. Ask him and ask Blessed Chiara to pray for you, to approach your suffering now and in the future in a new way. This will not happen overnight, but saints like Blessed Chiara, who died in 1990, only 31 years ago, show us that it is possible. Until next time, don't forget to rest a while with Jesus.